Sports and the PGA Tour are delighted to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Shriners Hospitals for Children Open is about to start. I'm Luke Elvey alongside Rich Beam in the booth and it's a hello to Henny Koyak down on the course following our featured group. Hi Luke, I'm very much looking forward to bringing you the action from the golf course for this week's featured group. Now there is a sense of maybe fear, heightened competition this week, as this player has said that they're starting up a rivalry with their playing partner. So it appears this player's target is to beat Ricky Fowler this week. That should be an exciting showdown, Henny. Yeah, Ricky Fowler sounds like he's up for the challenge on social media. He's been talking about this rivalry. Is Ricky ever not up for the challenge, though? He'll smile as he's beating you, that's for sure. Yes, likes to kill him with kindness, does our Ricky. He is a, a wonderful fella on and off the course. And with a renewed confidence in his game, the new father's looking to shine here. This will be a tough challenge for our rivalry. Well, you'd have to think this person's got a head full of confidence, Rich, coming off a last start win. The game is coming easy to this player right now, so no reason not to believe they can't do it again this week. Eight feet to the cup. This is their look at birdie. Yep, tracking well. Well, Rich, that's ideal. A birdie to start the day. I've never been disappointed by starting off my round with a birdie, Luke, I can tell you that. After that hole, they sit in second place behind the leader, Will Zalatoris. The second at TPC Summerland is a par four, measuring 469 yards from the back tee. It plays slightly downhill, so a strong drive here will set up even just a short iron approach. However, there's a huge waste area to the right, so accuracy off the tee is required. The smart option here is to lay back with the three metal and give yourself a full shot in, and also take one club less into this green as it will release down the slope. Let's take a look at Colin Morikawa from moments ago. I got to say, his short game is one of the best in the game. Oh, that's the shot. Go ahead and make one. Don't worry about getting it up and down. From around 140 yards here. Going with the pitching wedge here. Come on, look after us. Little bounce to the right here. That's well played. Anything on the green from there was fine. And this one for back-to-back -back birdies. What's in front of them, Henny, with this putt? Straight back up this hill. Can be firm here. Wonderful putt. And that puts some real pressure on their rival now. Looking ahead now, and this player is currently tied for first in the standings alongside Will Zalatoris. And after that good play, moving up the leaderboard. The third hole at TPC Summerlin is a very strong par four, measuring 492 yards. There's a huge ravine that works right up through the middle of this. It requires a very strong drive up the right half to go at this green in two. There is a big fairway to the left if you want to tuck over and get up and down for your par that way. Oh, that was pure. What kind of shot are they facing here, Henny? Setting up here from about 175 yards. Going with the six iron here. Needs this one to kick right. Wow, what a shot. Luke, nothing gets past you. Yes, this kid is a stud. What an opportunity to make a birdie. It's tracking. Super shot, that. Unreal display this week with that wand. And with that hole done, this player currently is in first place, followed by Will Zalatoris. The fourth at TPC Summerlin is a pretty straightaway par four, measuring 450 yards from the back tees. The fairway bunkers down the left and right are to be avoided. Really, not much to this hole, just be accurate on approach. Uh, not quite the shot he was wanting. Henny, how's that ball lying? 
It's tough to see from here. This reminds me of my breakfast. Nice fried egg. And that shot back in the fairway. Rich, there's plenty of paths to the PGA Tour, but few seem to bash their way to the PGA Tour quicker than Will Zalatoris. It was an immediate impact he had, and uh, it's just such an exciting game he possesses. Watching him go from the Corn Ferry Tour and essentially <laughs> bypassing all of that fairly immediately with the three wins and getting onto the PJ Tour and having such a profound effect when he was out there really is quite astonishing without getting the win but seemingly in contention each and every week out there it's you feel the sky is the limit for what's going to happen with this young man he is so disciplined in what he does in a round of golf he's got a very he's got a great mind in the way that he approaches the game and how he advances the golf ball to point A to point B. To point, he sees this golf course three shots in advance. It's just kind of like it's right there in front of him. It reminds me of an old school pool player who already is, he's already made all the shots. Now he just has to go ahead and just sink the next one because he set himself up perfectly for the next one. It, it's uh, it's impressive. Gee, there's some energy and action going on all around this property. Wonder what's happened. No harm, no foul there with that shot. I tell you what, there's been some great golf being played all over the course. Let's have a look at this. Tony Fino with a fantastic shot. Let's return to live play now. Trying to get two, three under par with this putt. This is what they have left for birdie here. This one's online. And that's a great way to forget about that bogey on the last. And that will take him to three under. Our current leader is enjoying a one-shot lead. The sixth at TPC Summerlin is a staking par four, playing 430 yards. There's a big waste area up to the left-hand side that needs to be avoided. If you can position your drive on the right half of this fairway, it gives you the best shot up the hill to a green that is not protected by any bunkers. Golf became a power game, and there's few players out on tour that have more prodigious power than Tony Finau. If he really wants to go full tilt, Rich, it feels like everyone's playing for second. He is a dynamic player that has the ability to make birdies in bunches. The ball striking, I think, is always going to be brilliant watching him when he was on the Corn Ferry Tour, graduated to the PGA Tour, and just keep watching the steady progression. Each and every week, he just seems to get a little bit better, and the confidence level is over the moon with this kid. And to bundle it all up, Luke, he's one of the nicest guys in the world. You want to root for a Tony Finau. He is such a likable, lovable guy, I believe, that you can't help but root for him. And the wins that he didn't get, are just heartbreaking and we felt the pain alongside with him. I love watching this guy play. I root for him every single week. This one's for Birdie. Leading by three strokes now. The eighth at TPC Summerlin is a big par three playing 239 from the tips. A well-struck shot will avoid the gully here, but anything to the left half can roll off the green. The bunker short rider also to be avoided so you don't make a sloppy bogey. Oh, what a lovely shot. He'll be delighted to be inside the range there. Outside chance of the birdie, but a two-putt here is still good. Let's get back to it, shall we? And this is one of those lengthy putts. Good one just to get close.
He was on a good line. Big putt for Parr coming up. And well hold. Let's move on. Still in the lead now after that hole. The ninth at TPC Summerlin is a par five measuring over 563 yards. Really, the main aim here is to just avoid that bunker off the left of the tee. Then, if safely in the fairway, you can get after this green. A strong shot will play to the left half of this green and feed down to any hole location. A birdie chance, no doubt. Rich, uh, I know you love being here in Vegas, perhaps for different reasons than watching the golf tournament but while we're here at the tournament you know, tell me a bit more about Shriner's impact on the game and, and this entire region look I, I fail to see what you mean by that uh, I think Vegas is a very nice uh, wholesome city uh, that I do enjoy coming to visit but the golf course is fantastic it's held at TPC Summerlin every single year and it used to be the venue where they had the last round but now every round is here and I think the players enjoy that. I think they like being at the same golf course each and every day. They get a feel for it. And I think that's why the scores historically year in and year out are so much lower than they were in the past. I think it's a, a really good opportunity to go out there and make a ton of birdies. But that's not the easiest thing to do, is it? Getting comfortable making seven, eight, nine birdies around. Some players don't have that that comfort zone and so I'm always interested to see the players that get into that zone each and every day and are making that many birdies to see if they can sustain it for four straight days looks to me rich that this player has a ton of confidence put themselves right back in position to win straight off their last start they're gonna have to make some birdies coming down the closing stretch but they have a lot of good vibes coming from that last win I expect more of the same this week and they'll tap this in for birdie currently in first position placement off the tee is required at the tpc summerlin 11th hole par four measuring 448 yards the big bunker down the right side is to be avoided at all costs and there's also a little tree there which might affect any line of sight approach to this green this one is right down the pipe a wonderful shot a chance for birdie here on the 11th and a fantastic look upcoming Good look at a birdie here. And another one goes. And with it, an increase of his lead. And that will take him to eight under. Now let's switch our focus to Ricky Fowler. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Our current leader is enjoying an eight-stroke advantage. The 12th. Here at Summerlin is another short par four, 442 yards off the tips, but plays slightly downhill and leaves just a short iron approach. The only real danger here is the big body of water that starts around 150 yards short and goes right up past the green. And he's down there. This is looking around 115 yards out. Going with the 9-iron, nine nine, I think. This one heading towards the green. They're yeah, not a bad shot, that one. 13 feet to the hole. This is on a great line. Fair effort, that. Good birdie. Now over to Ricky Fowler. He's currently in fifth place. So after that effort, this is the current standings on the course. Currently nine under for the round. The 13th at TPC Summerlin is a monster par five measuring over 600 yards from the back tees. The big hitters with the tail breeze can cover that bunker on the left hand side. But if you want to lay up, make sure you're giving yourself the right number because there's a lot to this green and plenty of ways to three putt it. Be careful on approach. Two wins so far this season. And here we are with the third shot.
Well, you like the look of those hands. You better believe it is great stuff to watch. And there's no movement on the leaderboard after that hole. And I don't give the rest of the field much hope today. Our leader is way out in front in this final round. Choosing the 9-iron here. Well, this one's going right at the flag. Oh, that one's absolutely stiff. Just three feet to the cup. Little birdie look in here. That will work. And maintaining top spot on the leaderboard after that. And I don't know if the rest of the field is up for catching them here today in this final round of action. Yeah, this lies pretty deep here. Well, that's an unlucky break. That one was right at it. Now let's switch our focus to Ricky Fowler. He's currently in third place. And back to the course with the live action. This would be a great up and down from this spot. Oh, a lovely opportunity to save par here. Like the look of this one. And the putt drops, now 11 under, heading down the stretch. And nice to have that cushion heading down the last few holes. The 16th at TPC Summerlin is another one of those great scoring holes en route to the finish. A par five playing 560 yards. A well-struck drive up the right half here gives you a chance to get at this green in two. If you are going for the green, make sure you've got enough club because that huge penalty area in front of it will ruin any score. Be careful going through the green here as well because getting down from over the back is not that easy. And this putt to move into second place. Well, they look like they're taking this on in two. Okay, let's get back to the action. And he's down there. You got a read? Just got to use the touch of a feather. Barely has to blow on it. This is just downhill. Three feet to go here to the hole. And he just keeps putting a gap on the rest of the field. What a putt to hold. The 17th at TPC Summerlin is a downhill par three, playing 196 yards. Jonathan Byrne once famously holed out in the playoff here to snatch the title. The green shapes right to left towards the hazard, so make sure if you're going to go for it, be very accurate. Uh, a bit long on that one. An opportunity to make their par. Oh, what a stroke. Yeah, nice to make a mid-range par putt. Leading by a phenomenal 12 strokes after that one. And I don't know if the rest of the field is up for catching them here today in this final round of action. The 18th at TPC Sumlin is a 444-yard par four with a big body of water just beyond the gully, which you've got to drive. Make sure you avoid those bunkers on the right side to give you a good iron into this green. And Henny, what are you seeing down there? Setting up here from about 155. This one looks to be heading towards the green. This is always a good moment. A putt to win the tournament. And it's fair to say that this player ran the tables this week, Rich, and came up trumps in Las Vegas. Look at your Shriners Children's Open winner. And nobody on the PGA Tour will be shining quite as brightly as this player the rest of the evening here in Las Vegas. And Rich, what a performance. They've got back-to-back -back wins. What a force they're proving to be out here on tour. I got to say, this player is in full flight at the moment. Just sit back and watch how awesome they are at the moment. Well, on behalf of myself, Luke Elvey and Rich Bean, thanks for tuning in. Catch you tomorrow.
2K Sports, in association with the PGA Tour, is proud to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Champions Invitational is about to begin. I'm Luke Elvey, alongside Rich Beam in the booth. And it's hello to Henny Koyak down on the course, following our featured group. Hi Luke, I'm pleased to be following this featured group, as there are rumours of quite a rivalry kicking off between these two players. And so this week, Henny, they're vying to beat Tony Finau. This should inspire some brilliant play. Oh, Tony Finau will not be letting up this week, Luke. But he's such a nice guy, you almost don't want to beat him. I mean, it's tough, but you must. I don't think you're going to outdrive him, that's for sure. But I am play... Oh, maybe you can get him there. You have to putt well, though. Tony Finau might be a big, cuddly teddy bear, but when it comes to playing on a golf course, he's going to try and strangle you to death. Good luck trying to beat Tony Finau. There is literally no weakness in this man's game. Now he knows how to win. From around 180 yards out. Well struck. And this putt is from birdie three on the scorecard. Come on, ball. Come on. Oh, gee, that line was looking good, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just about three feet away. This is what they have left for par here. He's currently tied for second. And now let's catch up with John McCarthy for an on-course report. What can we expect from Echo Park Golf Club this week, John? Well, Luke, uh, one thing I can say about this after walking the course this morning, it's a long one. So distance off the tee, especially important here at Echo Park. Course starts off along uh, the big lake. There are a few holes that hug the edge of this lake, not unlike uh, a Bay Hill, but here you get hit with it right off the start when you get away from the water, you get hit with the sand on the sixth. There is a thin corridor of fairway that leads to the green that weaves its way through, I think there's five, six bunkers leading up to and surrounding the sixth green. And from there on out, the players are going to be on the watch for the sand because it's sneaky and it's hard to avoid in certain situations. It's going to be an exciting time here, I think, this week at Echo Park. Oh, that's piped. That's heading down the runway. Well, Rich, it's become a bit of a new age thing on tour. Uh, a couple of rivalries that heat up on social media. We've seen a number of other players that call each other out. Uh, what have you made of this in social media age? Well, you better have thick skin if you're going to get into the social media arena. Thankfully, they didn't have it when I was out there on tour because I don't know if I could handle it. I certainly uh, couldn't be trusted with it back then. But I think if you're going to go into that arena, you have to treat social media like it's just something that it's fun to do. If you, if you do go down that rabbit hole in social media, you better be prepared for the consequences. That a boy. Good shot. Always love these opportunities, especially when it's for birdie. Right by the hole. Just three feet to the cup. So no movement on the leaderboard, remaining at even overall. Teeing off here at the third hole.
Oh, absolutely flushed. Well, this is some lovely momentum to take into the tournament coming off a last start win, Rich. Can't think of any better momentum. Obviously, the players firing on all cylinders. Sit back, watch, and enjoy it. This putt coming up is for Birdie. This looks good. Beautiful shot. Nicely played. Moving on up the leaderboard now after that hole. Here we are at Echo Park Golf Club, the fourth hole, and it's a big brute of a par four. Off the tee, your eyes look down the left-hand side and see two massive bunkers and obviously the water, so anything right of that is just fine. If you find the fairway, second shot is downhill just a little bit to a long, narrow green that has got bunkers down the right-hand side. Distance control with that second shot is absolutely imperative if they want to have a good look at birdie. That drive heading straight towards the cut stuff. And let's have a look at Tony Fee now. now who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? OK, let's get back to it, shall we? Well, Rich, this won't come as a big surprise, will it? Because there's a lot of people talking about this player. They've been performing beautifully all season. And many think they can win this event. Without a doubt, the best player all around on tour, in my mind's eye. It is no shock to see them contending for the lead once again. And with that putt hold, it's back-to-back -back birdies. Two in a row there, Luke, getting their groove on. And with that, he's now broken the tie, all alone at the top of the leaderboard. It's time to step onto the tee here at the fifth. Going with the seven. This is looking pretty good in the air. Six feet remaining to the cup. What a great opportunity here for a look at a birdie. Well, that's an early statement right there. That sets a positive tone for the player, doesn't it? Currently at three under for the day. And they'd be feeling buoyed with confidence after that birdie. Here's a good chance to maintain the momentum. This hole is so important at this critical time. Go for it. Lay it back. How much do you trust your swing? Well, let's see how this shot goes from the fairway bunker. Okay, time to return to the action. Second shot here on the sixth. Oh, they're dialed in. It's an absolute clinic. Lining up the birdie putt here. Our leader is currently enjoying a four-stroke advantage. This hole is a par five. That's a nice-looking tee shot, that one. It's been a good year. Three wins so far this season. Nicely done. Getting ready to play their third. What's in front of them, Henny? This one's 13 feet from the cup. Okay, steady now. Well, this would be a good one to make. It's for par. And now over to Tony Finau. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. So after that effort, let's have a look at the contenders and the pretenders. He's currently sitting in first place. Let's see what happens here at the eighth. Just needs this one to kick right. Not a bad approach. Grab the putter from the caddy. You're dancing. Trying to get to five under with this putt. Oh, so close. Par putt coming up here. 
Let's take a look at what Tony Finau's up to. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? And still in top spot after that hole. Keep it going. Here we are at the final hole on the front nine. And after a par at the last, a chance to perhaps signal some intent. They have put some hurt on that ball. Send it. Do you like the view from where you're standing, Henny? Setting up here from about 195 yards. This should play. Yeah, a quality shot, that. 13 feet to the cup. That was a gallant attempt. Pretty good chance here. This one's for par. Unable to take advantage of the great approach there, Rich. Well, this is where the knees start to knock. The sweat starts to appear on the palms of your hands, Rich. Just a slender lead with nine to play. Yeah, no time to start thinking about that lead, Luke. they got to keep their head down and keep going forward. Cannot think about that lead or people will pass them. Absolutely tattooed that drive. Second shot here at the 10th. And far from the green here, just in the greenside rough. Nice recovery there. Yes, very smooth tempo there on that chip. Leading by four strokes after that one. The 11th at Echo Park is a par four stretching at 4.30 from the back tees. Just a slight bit uphill off the tee shot. Find a spot at that far bunker, Luke, that you want to aim at and go ahead and turn it loose. From there, second shot goes over a nice little meandering stream that wanders throughout the golf course to a green. Clover-like in, in appearance, but i got to say, this is really one of the coolest holes on the golf course. I love it. They're going with a bit more club here. Let's see if it was the right call. Henny... You've had the chance to have a look over this one? Setting up this part 14 feet from the cup. Looking for another birdie here. Not sure how that putt came up shy. I hate to use the word choke, Luke, but that's exactly what happened there. A flat out choke. Time to play one of the one shotters. Going with the eight iron here. But not a bad approach. Will be putting. Trying to get to six under now with this putt. This one's tracking. And that putt will give them birdie number six on the day. And that will take him to six under. And after that performance, they'll stay right where they are in the standings. Well, the 13th hole here at Echo Park Golf Club uh, is not as kind. A big hole at 5.04 from the tips. Well, thankfully, it's slightly downhill off the tee. But yes, avoid those bunkers down the right-hand side. And of course, that meandering brook that is a feature of this golf course. Big hitters can actually take it over everything down the right-hand side. But that's for the brave few. Second shot downhill slightly to a massive green. Just some big bunkers on the left-hand side, but plenty of bailout room over to the right. And just a little bit of clean-up work remaining on this hole. And let's have a look at Tony Fee now. Coming off a bogey on the last hole. And after that effort, this is how the leaderboard looks. Our current leader is enjoying a six-stroke advantage. Welcome to the tee of a par four. Now over to Tony Finau. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. It might be an ambitious play, but I like it. Looks like they're going for the green here. From about 130 yards here. Looks like they're going with the pitching wedge. Oh, that one's straight at the pipe. Well, usually Tony Finau is the tall order. 
But after that shot, I think beating it and getting inside it is the new tall order. What an approach. Two great shots are required here because this hole is a long par four. Second shot here on the 15th. Looks to have opted for the eight iron. This looks to be heading to the green. And just about eight feet left to the hole. This for back-to-back -back birdies. Don't want to state the obvious, Rich, but uh, a little too hard, that one. Well, it was a wonderful approach shot, wasn't it? But unfortunately having to settle for par. Opting for the nine iron. That was a little bit of a misfire, I'd say. And what a rare miss today. They've been so good with their approach shots. Five feet coming up to the cup. This is what they have left for par. Let's take a look at what Tony Finau's up to. Birdied their last hole. And from the bunker here, looking for an up and down. And now we can take a look at how that play affects the leaderboard. Currently at seven under for the day. Two holes to go, Luke. I know who I like. Yep, that'll work, that's fine. Second shot here on the 17th. Looks to have chosen the seven iron. That should find the surface. A nice approach shot there, pin high inside the range. Putting for birdie here. And that's eight birdies today. And with that, he'll move to eight under par. Awesome play. Well, what a lovely position to be in. Holding the lead, playing the last. Good luck. Going and going and going. Well, that's right out of the top drawer. A great shot from our leader. Oh, really leaned on that tee shot. That went forever. That's going to fall in the water, sadly. Time now for the fourth shot. Here's their sixth shot. Oh, that's great. It just missed the hole. And this putt for the tournament. This one's dialed in. Well, there you have it. What a wonderful victory, Rich. Absolutely. I, it's hard to believe that this player already got four victories on the season. Top of the game right now. It's impressive. And Rich, I think you mentioned earlier that this player was your favorite. Well picked. Listen, I, it's not a hard pick, is it? This player has consistently been there all season long. There's no reason why not to pick them to win. They just make me look smart. That's about it. Well, that just about concludes our coverage. I'm Luke Elvey, and on behalf of Rich Beam, plus all the hard-working folks at HB Studios, it's good night for now.